Hey, Dan back with another video. Today I'm going to be talking a little about some 80s era cold weather gear and as a part one of the two-part video on the ration cold weather, which was first developed in the 1980s. So we're just going to talk about what was kind of state-of-the-art for U.S. military use in the uh, cold environments. Um, you know, the U.S. had troops stationed uh, in some pretty cold environments as part of our defenses against the Soviet bloc. And um, at the request of the Marine Corps in the early 1980s, the Natick Labs began to develop a cold weather ration um, that was specialized for these kind of environments. So we're going to talk about the ration here in a little bit, but I want to show you a little bit some of the gear they already had in place at the time to deal with this uh, you know, extreme cold weather. So the outer uh, most garment uh, would have been the M65 uh, parka, and then they had a matching the matching uh, trousers here, which uh, are you know like a, the same pattern almost as the BDU uh, trousers or the you know the previous Vietnam era jungle trousers, but they are nylon or cotton outer shell, and then they have a uh, quilted inner liner. You can see here so these would keep you pretty warm you know they're wind resistant have the quilted liner uh, same thing goes for the parka it had the uh, wind resistant outer poplin shell the gloves uh, pockets were lined with wool as well as the hood was lined with wool and then it had the quilted inner liner and the hood had this synthetic fur ruff on it which the original ones are actually were wolf fur, but they stopped doing that, thankfully. Uh, I don't really like the idea of our doggy friends being turned into hoods, so I'm glad they stopped doing that. But So this equipment here kind of started in the 60s as part of the M65 wet, dry, cold weather uniform. And uh, was eventually phased out in the late 1980s for the uh, newer Gore-Tex uh, type equipment, which we can talk about later. Um, so like I said, you had the parka and the pants as your primary outer component. Underneath that would have been worn just the standard battle dress uniform. Um, for your hands, you had the trigger mitten, finger mitten gloves. Now these go back to the Korean War era, and believe it or not, these are still in use today. And the reason they use a mitten is because in extreme cold environments, mittens actually keep your hands warmer because, you know, you have your body heat being used when your fingers are close together like that to help keep warm. And you had obviously you need one finger as a soldier to pull a trigger on your weapon. So that's why they still even use these mittens to this day, you know, almost 50 years uh, after they were first developed. Um, Another item they had for check your face in an extreme cold environment uh, was a mask like this. You know, they had some other more standard headgear like, you know, your knit caps and scarves, which I have in the collection, but we'll just show this. Now, this thing's kind of intimidating looking. I don't know if that was intended, but I feel like if you saw a bunch of guys dressed in white on skis coming across the snow with these masks on, it'd probably be fairly intimidating. So, um,. There was a lower piece of this, like a bib that would hang down too to kind of keep, uh, help keep the wind out from your neck area. And I'll show the label here. So, uh, pretty interesting piece. It's just thin cotton and then it has this 3M mask. I believe that's, I'm assuming that's to help with like moisture, you know, getting into your mouth. I'm not sure exactly the thought behind this. Uh, if anyone out there has any comments, let me know. I'll show the instructions with that. You can uh, look at that if you want. So that was used to kind of protect the face from frostbite in extreme cold, windy environments. Another item they had were these moccasin type boots, or something you would I would picture like Inuit people and in, you know Alaska and such wearing. Um, it's the boot extreme cold weather. If you look at the instructions on these, they're still attached. 
pardon me there. It says for below 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So these are for extreme, extreme cold. You know, under normal circumstances, they had some more standard type uh, boots, uh, like the Mickey Mouse boots, which some of you might be familiar with, which were like a heavy duty rubber boot with a vacuum pocket to help keep your feet warm that way. So these are pretty interesting. I imagine these also would have worked well with the snowshoes that they wore sometimes or the skis, but a pretty interesting item. One of the other uh, unique cold weather items was the Arctic Canteen. Kind of looks more like a Boy Scout canteen than your typical military issue canteen. Um, and this worked, I think it said it was rated for up to negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And it worked because it, it has a vacuum two layer system to keep the water from freezing. You can see uh, this one's dated 1984. And it doesn't use a screw-on cap, it just has the plug type cap there. And these were used up until the 90s, and then they came out with a canteen cold weather, which was pretty similar, but it was more of a flask type shape. And they're pretty uncommon. They don't see a lot of those. Uh, these are these are pretty common, but take a look at that. Alright, so these are pretty cool. I mean if you're camping winter time, this is a great item to have because it will keep your water from freezing. So, um, you know, one other item, you know, this is the, uh, you got the Kevlar helmet. Um, you know, also in this area, this was transitioning in, so you may have had the steel helmet, but they would have worn it with the snow cover. And same goes for the uh, parka, the gloves, and the uh, pants. They had white overshells for all of these. So if it was more of a snow than like a, uh, pine type environment where they were still green you could put on the um, over whites to camouflage in the snow so uh, and this whole system was designed to be worn in layers so I mean you can see base would have been your battle dress uniform underneath that you could have worn like the GI wool sweater um, if it was extreme you know depending on the environment if it wasn't a combat environment you didn't have your flak vest like back here on uh, you could have had the field jacket if not you know, you would have worn the flak vest underneath your parka. This is a Marine Corps style M1955 vest, so this dates back to the Vietnam era. But this one, if you look, actually is dated from the 1980s. So the thought process, you would have had your your uh, battle dress uniform, like I said, probably with your sweater underneath, your flak vest over that, and then your parka. Uh, over over the flak vest and you could adjust the layers as needed you know if you're going to be stationary you're probably going to want more layers uh, but if you're moving around you're going to start to build up heat pretty quick so everything was designed to kind of be able to be added and taken from as needed so that's a little bit about the equipment from okay so now that we've talked a little bit about the equipment let's talk about the rations they use themselves so the ration cold weather, like I said, had been requested by the Marine Corps in the early 1980s. They needed something specialized for these cold environments. Um, you know, the wet rations like your MCI, um, you know, something like this where everything was canned, or even as the MRE started to be introduced in the early 80s, which were, you know, in the, uh, retort pouches, but they were still wet. So... As it got cold, these things would freeze up, and that's either need an excessive amount of heater tablets to defrost it, or somehow attempt to eat it cold. So they wanted something that was well suited for the cold environment. So Natick Labs developed the ration cold weather or the RCW. So it was a two-part ration meant for you know breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You know it was spread out between these two uh, packs, which you know if you've seen the um, early MREs, it looks very similar to that, but everything in here is freeze-dried uh, so as to, you know, not be affected by the cold. And then you would reconstitute it, you know, you would use your water from your Arctic canteen and your, like, triexane fuel tabs to heat up water, reconstitute the contents, and, um, and then you could have your meal. So they came in this two-part, you see 1B, 2B, and they'd be banded together usually with either tape or like an industrial rubber bands, you can see that tape residue is still there. And, um, you know, that's how they were used. I think the contents of this meal total was about a little over 3,000 calories. 
So, you know, you need those extra calories in a cold weather environment to maintain your body heat. And um, so that was the whole thought process about, process about these. Um, they were first field tested in the mid-1980s uh, with a group of 10 Special Forces soldiers. They split them into two groups. They gave one a group MREs, the other group the rash in cold weather. Uh, at the end of the trials, all everyone that had the, you know, the... Um, cold weather rations said they had preferred them to MREs, just everything from the variety in them to how they function in the cold. Um, so, you know, it was, these were pushed through into production and they were re remained in production until the late nineties when they were replaced by the meal cold weather, which instead of being a 24 hour ration was just a single meal. And then three were meant to be eaten throughout the day. And that's still in production till this day. So, um, what we're going to do now, we'll take a look inside this, uh, one B here. Um, like I said, I'm not going to dig into the eating this one. I want to preserve these, but my buddy Nate's coming over. He has one he wants to eat. So, uh, on the part two of this video, we'll take a look at, um, you know, actually how to prepare one of these and, uh, eat it. So, so inside here we have some different contents. We got two iced tea drink mixes. Let's see. We got our brown spoon. Now this is a later one. The early ones I think still have the MCI style clear spoons. So this one's a little of a later style. Um, we got the oatmeal cookie bar. From what I understand, this is probably one of the most prized desserts in the US military rations. And so I think you can still find these in some of the modern LRPs, um, but these are really well sought out. They're supposed to be pretty good. I've never personally had one though. Uh, we got some beverage base powder, orange. I think my favorite thing about these is just the white packaging. I think it just looks cool. Uh, so here we have our main entree, the freeze-dried chicken stew, made by Oregon Freeze-Dried, which I believe is one of the companies that makes like the Mountain House meals today. And if you've been looked inside a LRP ration or any of your freeze-dried camping foods, these are pretty similar. So and it looks like if this uses the same date code as an MRE, it's a 99 dated uh, meal from what I can decode there. So if anyone knows differently, let me know, but I'm assuming this is a 99. Uh, we got the oatmeal cookie bar chocolate covered. This is also supposed to be really well, pretty well sought after. And then, what else we have here? Granola bars. And these are like freeze dried. Now I've seen with these, you can kind of reconstitute them and make like an oatmeal type um, dish out of them where you can just eat them as it is. So, and then lastly we have the M&Ms. Just plain M&Ms, let's see. If there's a date on these they can give us an idea of what the uh, maybe when these were made but no well it says nine so I'm guessing a 99 as well this is definitely that late 90s style M&M's packaging I remember so so that's the contents of your 1B chicken stew oatmeal cookie bars granola bars beverage base orange oatmeal cookie chocolate cover tea mix instant candy and spoon made by the warwick company one of the mre um companies that most of us are familiar with so in the 2b which is the dinner half you have beef stew oatmeal cookie bars granola bars beverage base orange brownie chocolate covered tea mix instant candy and spoon so the contents of this one aren't all that different from the first half so that's kind of if you got this one that might be a little disappointing kind of redundant um, hopefully the candy is something other than M&M's. Two packs of M&M's a day, I think I might be a little upset. Don't make me wrong, they're delicious, but they get old. Um, and then here's another example. This is an A unit, and this one's got a, more of a breakfast uh, variety. And now I've had this oatmeal, it's really good. So you have the instant oatmeal, nut raisin mix, cocoa beverage powder, the apple cider, this stuff's really good, because uh, this comes in some of the MREs, and that was always good. Fruit bar, soup instant, crackers, accessory packet, and spoon. So this one contains your accessory packet, which is pretty cool. Um, 
I might have to open this one up and take a look maybe. We'll both see in Nate's on Saturday, so we'll, we won't open this one. But um, that soup instant's probably a chicken, like a noodle soup, like a Limpton instant. Anyone who's made that when they're sick or anything, you know, instant kind, just pouring a cup of hot water and it's ready to go. So that's a look here at the uh, rash and cold weathers um, part one. Uh, I'm anxious to, you know, dig into one of these here in the next day or so and uh, taste some of this stuff. It's... It, these were really one of the better rations the military had and um, you know a lot of these contents are still pretty similar with the mule cold weather and these are just a, you can't find these anymore so that's why I'm not going to eat them but it's just for collectors purposes but they really are uh, probably one of the better rations the military ever made and questions comments on part one here let me know I'll be happy to answer I'm always looking for feedback and uh, stay tuned before we're going to show you how to dig into one of these. Thanks and have a good day.